Nuclear waste. The worst type of garbage for raccoons to get into. Why does anyone consider this guy to be funny? Now, it's a substance that we all know is dangerous, thanks to movies like this. He's trying to be funny here, I know. But as we'll see, it looks like he actually has gotten his information from movies and not real life. And you may live closer to nuclear waste than you think. And don't suffer the slightest bit for it. Did you never stop to wonder about that? By the way, I live within two miles of a nuclear power plant. Some of which, like plutonium, is lethally dangerous and will be, in a, will be around for an incredibly long time. Unless morons like you stop getting their way and let us make fast reactors that burn transuranics. One of the characteristics of it is it has an extremely long half-life. Plutonium-239, for example, has a half-life of about 24,000 years. It's true, 24,000 years. And that just scratches the surface. It takes 10 half-lives for plutonium to become harmless. So that's 240,000 years. Unless you use it as fuel then its waste products fall below background levels in about 300 years. And it's actually easy to understand how we got into this situation, because during World War II, we rushed to develop nuclear weapons because we were trying to defeat the Nazis. That actually has nothing to do with it. Maybe the waste from our weapons, but again, if morons like you get out of the way, that can be used as fuel too. But as we'll see, he keeps getting nuclear power and nuclear weapons confused throughout this segment. Anyway, the first nuclear reactors designed in the 1940s were thorium-based molten salt reactors that didn't have any problems that the Generation 1 reactors had and didn't generate anywhere near the waste. But the Navy decided they wanted to have aircraft reactors. But molten salt reactors work by convection, which stops when the plane goes into a dive and gravity goes away. That's why uranium PWRs were developed. By the way, the Navy decided not to do aircraft reactors, but government regulations working the way they do, no one decided to scrap it and go back to the safer molten salt reactors, at least until now. For instance, for years, we actually did this. They loaded the uh, radioactive waste and it was in barrels, 55 gallon barrels of, of uh, radioactive waste with concrete poured over it. It's funny, the uh, ocean don't glow out there outside of Red Bank, New Jersey. <laughs> okay, first of all, this is not The Simpsons. Nuclear waste doesn't glow. Second, concrete is an excellent radiation shield. You don't even need much of it. This is why nuclear reactors everywhere use concrete containment buildings. Well, everywhere except Chernobyl. I swear, do not put socialists in charge of this stuff. Now, over the years, we have dumped nuclear waste all over the country, and in many places, there have been frightening leaks. Take the Savannah River site in South Carolina, where waste from poorly stored material leaked into the groundwater. Yes, the most severely radiation polluted site in the world, except possibly for Chernobyl, but there's actually some debate about that. In fact, it was actually the waste from making hydrogen bombs. It wasn't even uranium. And the radioactive contamination was tritium, which is not a waste product of nuclear reactors. It's bad, but it's not a problem we're faced with from nuclear power. Researchers are now studying an area in North St. Louis County, Missouri, where tons of waste from the Manhattan Project... I'm just going to cut him off here. I'm skipping everything he says about weapons development. Let me make this clear. Nuclear power and nuclear weapons are two entirely different things. The only thing they have in common is the first seven letters. Thankfully, 60 years ago, our government and the scientific consensus came up with a solution. Yes, sodium-cooled fast reactors. In 1957, the National Academy of Sciences issued a report urging the creation of a permanent storage facility deep underground. Basically, a nuclear toilet. He's talking about Yucca Mountain. It's a stupid idea. First of all, the waste is still fuel. Second... Even if you did need to store it, it's actually better to store it in concrete bunkers on site or nearby 
than to track it all to one place. And the most frightening example of this is the Hanford site in Washington state. This is another weapon site. If Oliver doesn't even know the difference, why should anyone listen to a word he has to say? And in case you're thinking, well, I'm definitely glad that I don't live near Hanford, remember, there are nuclear power plants storing waste all over the country. NOT FROM NUCLEAR WEAPONS! You're dishonestly associating the two for no other reason than to scare people out of using the cheapest, safest, most plentiful form of carbon-free power we have. You don't get to say one more word about global warming after this. And while experts say it's highly unlikely, if a Fukushima-like accident happens at one of those, the results could be catastrophic. It's not just highly unlikely. For almost every plant in America, it's impossible. Because almost all of them are Generation 2 PWRs, where a Fukushima-like accident is impossible. So look, it, it is pretty clear we need to find a permanent facility to store our most dangerous waste. No, we do not. We need to stop the bogus fear-mongering from morons like you and allow the construction of Generation 3 fast breeder reactors, which can burn the transuranics while converting them into fuel for traditional reactors, and that are completely, 100%, walk-away safe. To be fair, he did have an alternative plan for all the states sitting on their nuclear waste, but to put it mildly, it was not exactly scientifically sound. Leave it on site, where it is. But that's actually a better plan, like I said earlier. Especially if they do end up allowing Gen 3 plants so they can easily retrieve it to use as fuel. The only thing standing in the way is stupid regulations made from people who are being just as moronic as you. Here is the truth. The scientific consensus for decades has been that leaving it where it is is a really bad idea. Citation needed. But here's the thing, we, we've been saying that we are going to fix this for decades now and we seem to be no closer to a solution. We have the solution. I've said it several times. Now let them implement it. Because we've been researching this story for a couple of weeks now. Really? Two weeks of research, and you didn't run into fast reactors, or breeder reactors, or molten salt reactors? You didn't read about Generation 3 designs? You didn't learn that you can burn transuranics as fuel? You didn't learn about walk-away safe sodium-cooled reactors that can be mass-produced, dropped in place of coal plants, and use the existing infrastructure? What does it say that one guy on the internet with no budget and no team of researchers can easily show how stupid you're being? The only explanation is that your research didn't lead you outside of your pathetic echo chamber. And just yesterday afternoon, we stumbled on a TV special from 1977, the year that I was born. As we watched that yesterday, we gradually and chillingly realized that by pure coincidence, it hits every beat of the story that we just told you. Yeah, well, maybe you shouldn't let your information be 45 years out of date. In 1977, they were still giving lobotomies. They were still practicing eugenics in California. You still had Vietnam draft dodgers in prison. Everyone had either one or two phones hardwired in their houses with dials owned and controlled by a monopoly phone company. You had the energy crisis, gay conversion therapy, bans on rock music and dancing, and Bugs Bunny cartoons were censored. Hell, just look at disco and the accompanying fashions to learn how backwards that era was. Maybe, just maybe, there's been a tiny bit of progress in nuclear science since then, you think? Nuclear waste is a problem that we were supposed to have dealt with in the 1980s and still cannot solve. Lie! So thanks for watching! Please hit like and subscribe, leave a comment, and go to donate.bogosity.tv to keep me doing what I do. And check out all the great content here, like this video selected just for you.